I. 547 in progress. Five thirty two in progress. Code I. Thirty two complete. Five forty in progress. Five 
550 in progress. Five twenty six in progress. Five twenty six complete.
Roger. Roger. We have visual.
We have visual.
Roger. Five eighty. Roger.
514 in progress. Twenty four in progress. Fourteen complete. Fifty four in progress. Twenty four complete. Five sixty four in progress. Ten in progress. Five 
526 in progress. Five sixty four complete. Five fourteen in progress. Five fourteen complete.
Mr. Boyd, finally. I was starting to wonder if you were going to spend the night. Shut your mouth. Mr. Boyd, listen, I understand you don't talk much. I get it. After all, you would never have... Well, you wouldn't have been able to do what you've done if you were a chatterbox. But I'm not asking you for a big speech. I'm not asking you to give me a master class in corruption. <laughs> oh, nothing like that. I'm, I'm only asking for one small story about the Devroom painting. The newspapers never gave out too many details since the investigation was ongoing. <laughs> but what's the difference now? What's left to hide? The, the painting couldn't be found, right? You, you made extra sure that it couldn't be found. <laughs> well, let's, let's drink a beer sometime. No, not today. No, uh, tomorrow or, or the day after. Or, or the day after the day after tomorrow. Just whatever's good for you. You see, I, I'm really interested in this. How did you pick that job? I mean, what did you want with that picture? I mean, that one in particular, it's, it's, it's a pretty specific choice, you know? It's a, it's a controversial artist. The critics don't agree. I've never heard of corrupt officials stealing paintings. They all take bribes, just, just bundles of money and paper bags, you know. Of course, I'm not comparing you to those ordinary rotten geezers. <laughs> not at all. I, I just wanted to say that even though I don't know all the details, I see that you've got your own style. Whether you realize it or not, that's why the press called you the Caesar of corruption. You can find lots of kings of corruption in the newspapers. There's a new one every month, but I've never seen a Caesar. Because Caesar, that's not about the scale, but the style. Style is everything, right? Please, Mr. Boyd. Why on earth should I get into the car with a stranger? Given your history, I'd imagine that you often had to get into a car with strangers. Back in Freeburg. Freeburg is different. Is it really so different? Absolutely. Friendlier? Warmer. Well, that's not saying much. Anywhere is warmer than here. How? Excuse me? How did you know who I was? How many ads were there? Ads? Well, I'd be willing to bet that when you came here, you went looking for housing in the newspaper ads. How many ads did you look at? I don't... I don't know. Maybe a dozen. But you chose this house. Why? Because it, uh... Because it stands away from everything. Well, that's a reasonable choice. Unfortunately, the neckties choose their houses by the exact same principle. They stash their goods in isolated houses until they can find a big buyer, but they don't settle into the house. They let someone else rent it. It's safer that way. Look, I'm not interested in how these neckties do business. I just want to know how they found out my real name. I'm not a big fan of drug dealers, Mr. Boyd, but I have to give them their due. Many of them are amazingly smart, much smarter than... Well, smarter than your average drug dealer, you know. And the man who was appointed to watch your house, Arthur Sherman, well, it turns out he's quite the brain. He even went to college. Can you imagine? Arthur is so clever that when he realized that you're Jack Boyd, he didn't report it to his bosses. You see, the Ties are a wandering gang. Yesterday they worked in Ripton, today they're here, tomorrow they'll be somewhere else. They'd just shoot you to be safe and that would be the end of it. But Arthur is clever, and he knew how valuable the information was, so he did the clever thing and brought it to me. But how did he know who I was? How exactly? Ask him yourself when you get the chance. Oh, looks like we've arrived. Mr. Boyd, are you coming? Are you completely out of your mind? I'm a wanted man. I shouldn't be showing my face in public, even if it is old and shaggy. Come on, Mr. Boyd. There's only drunk pigs and sweaty strippers in there. Nobody will even look at you. Don't you want to drink a mug of draft beer for the first time in months and burp loud enough that everyone hears? Aren't you tired of hiding? Don't you just want to be an ordinary person? You saw where I live. Now I want to see where you live. Don't you think that's fair? 
Okay, you win. But I'll never believe that you don't miss letting loose. That's not the only thing I miss. Not the only thing, and not the main thing. I understand. Well, here's where we live. What? We can't go inside? Well, I didn't go into your house. I stood a hundred yards away. Now we're even. Don't you think that's fair? Arthur Sherman. I want to talk to him. Mick, bring Sherman here. I'm sure he must still be awake. Uh, Sean told me about this Captain Britt Carter of yours. Now, if you want... It I... won't be a problem. You sure? I can manage. If you have any difficulties, just let me know. I could... well... And I thought you were a smuggler, not a butcher. I don't like the word smuggler. Then maybe you shouldn't smuggle. Well, I'll put it this way. I don't like what you mean by the word smuggler. You must be right. Freeburg and Sharpwood are very different. What kind of goods came through Freeburg? Automatic weapons? Heroin? People? I'll be honest with you, I can't brag that I never had to trade in the first, second, or third, but my most popular product is canned soup. Mushroom soup comes in a little red jar. Now this is coming from a man who spent over 30 years eating a tasteless soldier's rations and not complaining. And I can assure you that this soup is the most disgusting meal in the world. When you pop open the jar with a can opener, this smell immediately bolts up your nose. The smell of despair, you know? It's impossible to suck down this vomit without thinking for even a second that your life is going nowhere. Sharpwood kids, when they grow up and leave this place for the rest of their lives, they'll always shudder when they remember this awful soup. But only the lucky ones, the few who manage to get out. The rest will live here for the rest of their days, eating smelly soup and then feeding it to their own children. Because without 12 cent soup, they'd all die. I give them this life, with the smell of despair. Bitter, but life. I don't know what cruel word to call what I'm doing, but I'm definitely not a smuggler. And I want that... Oh, there's your college boy, Mr. Boyd. Give me a cigarette. Still alive, Mr. Boyd. Oh, wow. How did you know who I was? Were you really hiding all that well? You hitchhiked on your way to Sharpwood. Well, not to Sharpwood, of course, but, but, but to Big Rift. And from there you walked on foot, but before Big Rift, a red-haired guy named Locke drove you. He picked you up at a bus stop 70 miles down the highway. A buses from Garensburg pass that stop every six days. In Garensburg, you spent two nights at the Stone Woodpecker Hotel. I called down there and had a nice chat with Mrs. Hopper, who- Just stop! So you're really that clever, Arthur Sherman? Proud of your little investigation? If I'd known this investigation would turn me into a hostage to rednecks playing toy soldiers, I wouldn't have stuck my nose in your business, Mr. Boyd. Hostage? Arthur can't leave the barracks. It's uh, for his own safety. In addition, he likes to live by military regulations. Isn't that right, Arthur? This shit you're pulling here isn't military order. It's the middle of the night, but everyone's awake! He's right, Mr. Boyd. It's high time for bed. Jack.